Her eyes changed as her vision became blurry, but then it shifted again. He saw her changing and yelled at her, Don't you dare change. His command and she blinked the haze back. She looked at him, tears forming in her eyes. Her breathing went harsher. She whimpered and Junko got off of her. She curled on her side and hissed as the plane flared in her body. Jungkook immediately understood. He covered her with the dovet and cuddled her over the dovet. He pressed her back to his front and she whimpered due to pain. Shh, it's alright. You shifted for the first time. That is why it's hurting. It will go away, he whispered to her and she sniffed. Tears streaming down her face and falling on his bare bicep. It, it hurts. I don't understand. She sniffed again. It's all right. Just focus on me. Deep breaths. He told her and she did as he said. She took deep breaths with him. She didn't know when the tiredness took over and she fell into her slumber. In the middle of the night, she opened her eyes suddenly. She sat up on the bed and smirked. She trailed her index over his face, down to his chest, not touching though, just hovering, abdomen and the bulge. She tilted her head and her eyes glazed with lust. She looked over and the sun was peeking in the horizon. She looked around and stood on the floor, but she was not touching the floor. She was floating in the air. She looked over the bar and the glass sitting there with a half drink of whiskey. She went to the bar and stared at the glass for a good five seconds. She traced the rim and picked it up and tossed it in her throat. Her throat burned and she scrunched her eyes and nose. She put it down and smiled contentedly. She moved to the door. She went out and down the stairs. She stepped out of the house and saw different compounds. All of them have the same structure, but different vibes. She could feel it. She sniffed and went for the most seductive one. She reached near and stared at the compound, then smiled. She tried to open the door, but it was closed. She pouted as she stared at the door. She pondered for some time and then smacked. She was about to break the door, then it opened. A tall, lean man stared at her with no emotions in his eyes. Wine stared at his dark brown robes. Cold. They were cold. Wine, what are you doing here? The man asked, who clearly knew her. She didn't answer and her gaze fell on something. Something hanging on the wall. A picture. But it's small and she can't see properly. Suddenly the picture zoomed in and she discovered her new power. She stared at the picture. Her mouth fell open. The man in front of her kept on talking to her. But everything around her tuned out. And all she could focus on was the picture. She tried to get past him and he held her biceps topping her. She tried to go again but he wouldn't budge. She turned her head to her side and stared at him furiously. He stared back. She pushed him but he didn't budge and turned into his monster form. He towered over her as he stared at her, his features more sharp, wings behind his back like a bat and all black. A crown settled on his forehead with a huge purple stone in it when kept her stare sharp at him. You can't go inside my house. A horrific growl penetrated the quiet air and the birds around the area fell away. She turned to him, keeping her gaze fixed at him, raising her chin. She tilted her chin slightly and spoke. I will. And she pushed him hard as he fell on the chair in the corner. She smirked at him when he looked at her. She marched her way to her goal, the frame. Suddenly she was stopped by a hand in her hair. The man pulled at the roots and threw her back at the main door as she squatted like a crab and used the tips of her fingers to stop the struggling back. The man turned to her as his muscles 
pushed and bounced in pure anger. Wen stood to her full height and glared at him. She went after him with a deep timber, but a deep timber of command caused her to halt at her steps. Wen, Jenko called her. He immediately went to her. He held her face in his huge palms and spoke softly. Come back to your senses, Zora. Her demeanor shifted and she sagged on his body. Her knees buckling, Jenko grabbed his arms around her waist. She breathed heavily as she looked at him again, but with those pure, soft green eyes. I, I'm sorry, she hissed. Jenko shushed her and Juga shifted back, his anger evident as he grinded his jaw. She turned around and her eyes fell on the picture again. She ran to the picture and caressed the face in the picture. Jungkook frowned and looked at Suga, who also looked at him in annoyance. Wayne, do you know her? Jungkook asked, coming near her. Mom, Wayne whispered as tears made their way out of her eyes. She took the frame and hugged it to her chest. Mom, now she sobbed. She looked at the frame again and sat down on the floor. Mom, she kept on blabbering. She looked at her as his nostril flayed. He snatched the frame from her. She is my mother. He grated his teeth. No, m my mom, please give it to me. I don't have any picture of her. She spoke, wiping her cheeks with the back of her hands. What's wrong? I heard... Jimin entered in a robe, rubbing his eyes. Behind all of Jungkook, Hines entered. Jungkook, wine pleaded, with tears running down her cheeks. She's my mom, Zia, Sugar told her furiously. <laughs> my mom is Zia, she told him, perplexed. What's your father's name, Wine? Jungkook asked. Wine looked at him, then Sugar talk. Everyone's expressions changed. Reality dawned on their faces. What? Wine asked, looking everyone's expressions for. Jungkook stood in between Wine and Sugar and shook his head to him. Get out, Wine heard a whisper. I said out, all of you. Sugar shouted and Wine flinched behind Jungkook. Jungkook grabbed a hand around her waist and forced her to walk, but she kept on looking back at the picture in Sugar's hand. As soon as the picture was out of her sight, she felt a sudden urge to puke. She bent over on the side and emptied her stomach. She heaved as Jungkook held her. Her feet swayed as she went limp in Jungkook's arms. I don't understand why she reacted like that. She transformed last night and complained of pain. But now the second time she is even worse. Two days she has been out. She didn't even open her eyes. For two days in the fever, I don't understand. She must feel powerful after her pause. She must heal herself. But why is it getting worse? Jungkook spoke, walking back and forth. Jin and Aram sat on the couch in his office room. What are you talking, Lord? Aram asked. Are you trying to say her powers are hurting her? Jin asked. Yes, I think, Jungkook replied. The door swung open and we entered with a stern expression on his face. What is it? Jin asked. Positive, we replied. What? Jungkook asked. The DNA, we started. She is Sugar Hines, half sister, we explained. But he smells like Dalila, Aram asked. Sugar's mom was Biasis. Jin started. That means she is a mixed breed of Dalila and Biasis. Jin spoke and looked at everyone's stern expressions. And she never shifted because she can't until another Biasi helps her with the Biasi blood. Aram ended. And Jungkook fell silent. The whole room fell silent because the king... For the very first time in the caves, fell for someone, and he might lose her if he didn't help her. God knows what destruction he would inflict upon the world if he loses her. 
She can't escape. Her mother saved her and used her powers. To keep her powers at bay, she needs to be dead. She would open the lost records. The records that I have closed her with their death. The man turned around and grabbed the man's throat in front of him. His eyes burst. Because of you, she is alive. Because of you, I'm in this situation. The man shouted at his face and pushed him. The man held his throat and coughed. He took a few deep breaths and faced the furious man. I promise this time she will die in that. In so much pain. The man spoke hoarsely and went out of the dark room, leaving the furious man alone as he swept a hand on the mini bar, sending all the glasses and bottles to crash on the floor in millions of pieces. Another raising enemy. What will happen to her? Wine opened her eyes and groaned, feeling like she had been run by, over by a truck. A rough hand caressed the soft skin of her cheek, and she came to her senses. A intoxicating incense filled her nostrils, and she recognized it. She recognized him. Chichon. She whispered and he took her in his arms, holding her to his chest. He swiped the wet strands of hair from her face before cupping her cheek. He's so soft today, she thought, and smells amazing, she nuzzles in his chest. She felt his hands caressing her over her body and telling her something she couldn't comprehend. In her drowsiness, she remembers the monster he is who killed her man in front of her. His warm blood splattered on her face. He saved her, but she can't sit with the fact that he murdered someone. Then she remembers the man's face turning blue when she choked him. She doesn't know what she was doing, as if she was not in control. Someone took over her body and she couldn't get it back. She felt the zing of the power going through her body. But it was painful. So painful that she cried but no one could hear her. She called out for help but she was trapped. She felt trapped and pained. And now she is hurting. She called out for him but then again darkness took over her. And the stream of consciousness ended only you can help her you know the powers of biases could kill them if not acquired properly jin spoke as they all sat around the table for a meeting they gathered for business but jin changed the subject after the meeting you have to help her she is your sister jin raised his voice half oh, sister sugar grated back it's not her fault that she shares the same mother as you Jimin spoke and Sugar glared at him. I don't give up. He tells them, emphasizing on each word, standing up, planting his palms over the cool con concrete. Jungkook sat at the other corner, one leg over his knee, elbows played over the concrete as he looked down, drawn in his thoughts. And I will not help her with anything, he says, marching towards the door. Think about it all over again, Jacob spoke, making him halt over his steps. Sugar's nostrils flared as he heard him. He just went out, leaving them alone on his dr drive back home. He thought everything over. How his mom left him and his dad. How he missed her every single day. How all of his friends' mothers came with them and adored them and he was left alone for longing he longed for her but she left him she left him because of him he still remembers the beating he gave her every day every day he would hear her screams at night behind the closed doors she would scream and come out bruised in the morning he remember her smile etched with pain but she left him alone in that hell. She left him and created a new and happy life without him. A tear escaped his eyes and he smacked the steering wheel. He increased the speed of his car as he made his way home. No. It hurts so much.
Ryan, open your eyes, look at me. Don't you dare close your eyes. To be continued.